All right, welcome back, everybody, to the latest edition of Top 5 Toys. Uh, my name is Peter Renner. I'm here presenting this with my buddies over at Tales from the Flip Side, as well as my own uh, YouTube channel as well. Just under my name if you want to find me. But, uh, yeah, so I'm just back with another list of toys for you guys. I've been getting a lot of great suggestions from people of uh, toy lines they want to see covered. And I promise I will get to them all because I want to do them all as well. I love toys. So uh, why not uh, spend a few minutes just talking about all of them? Uh, I really wanted to do, if you can look behind me, I really wanted to do Star Wars. But I felt like I've done so much Star Wars this week that it might have really, really been overkill. So... I decided to shift focused, and not only shift focus from more of the modern things that I've kind of covered with the uh, the newer G.I. Joe Classified and the uh, Marvel Legends, like the retro series, even though they're retro, they're still a recent run of uh, toys. I figured I'd shift focus from that. I'm going to go back this week and do something that uh, is near and dear to my heart, and I'm sure uh, a few of you out there that are as old as me can remember, are the uh, the original Shogun Warriors line. And I'm talking about the big guys. Uh, there are you know smaller figures. They have that like five-inch line, and I think there's even the smaller... Uh, line too with some of those die cast metal uh, figures, but I'm not doing the little guys yet. We can save that. We can do those another time. I'm talking about the big two foot tall plastic jobs. You know those those big guys. These are the ones that you know these came with warnings and uh, this was you know when kids could get hurt by their toys with the spring loaded uh, missiles that would shoot out. Uh, everybody was terrified that the kid was going to choke on a missile that got fired out of a robot's hand, but we had them anyway. I know it was the 70s and early 80s, so. Awesome, awesome set of toys. So I figured, let's go back and basically any of these are uh, are worth picking up if you can find them. Just just so you know, if you're out at a flea market yard sale, you see a, a big old robot that's you know two feet tall, just buy it because there's a good chance it's a Shogun Warrior and it's worth a few bucks in any condition. And I really mean that. We're talking about incomplete pieces, even pieces of these figures, hands, missiles, the little shurikens, like even little parts. People need them to kind of rebuild you know, repurpose and uh, refurbish their their versions out there. So all of this stuff is worth something to somebody. So, uh, you know, be mindful, keep your eyes open, and see what you can find out there. But as far as our list goes, I'm going to do the top five here on the uh, flip side, and then I'll just do the, my honorable mentions over on my channel just to make it a little bit longer. So I won't keep you guys too long. Uh, I'm also considering instead of just breaking this up, I might just do a top ten list instead of this top five. But I don't know. we'll see how things go and see what uh, topic I want to do next week. But before we get to that, let's do this week. Let's do Shogun Warriors. So we're going to start off, and if I butcher some of these names, I apologize. I'm just reading it how I would read it in my head. So number five, I have Mazinga. I don't know. I know it sounds like uh, Sheldon from uh, Big Bang Theory saying Mazinga, but Mazinga is uh, number five. And this is like average selling, like 293 bucks. this figure. I tried to separate loose from boxed, because obviously finding a boxed figure is going to be a lot harder, but... Truthfully, there's not a lot of you know difference between the two. Like some sales of loose go as high as the box. Some boxes, like it's all relevant. Like it's all pretty much in that same ballpark range. So uh, high sale of this guy was about four ninety nine ninety nine. But yeah, that two ninety three sale, uh, two ninety three average, I should say. Correct. Uh, that's why he comes in at number five. Uh, and again, this is a toy line. This original run, it had what I think all of like eight figures. So me doing five out of the eight, uh, it pretty much covers the whole run. So you're going to see most of them here. And then when I do the honorable mentions, I'll basically cover the rest of them anyway. So uh, that's why I'm thinking of just shifting the uh, from 5 to 10 going forward. But that's neither here nor there. But the other thing, and I think what really drew me into this line as a kid, uh, is our number four pick. And that was Godzilla. Yes, they actually covered Godzilla in this series. And I loved me some Godzilla when I was a kid. I, I don't know. It was my favorite toy. I still remember it very fondly, the little... You push the flap back on his neck, and the little tongue fire thing would come out. The tail popped off. You could, for whatever reason, Godzilla could shoot his fist because, again, toys were dangerous. Toys were fun when I was a kid, so you could shoot Godzilla's fist at uh, at his enemies. It was it was cool. It was the coolest toy I had when I was growing up. I remember I used to have him fighting the uh, the Kraken from uh, the Clash of the Titans series. I don't know if you remember that one because that was a cool toy as well. But again, that's another another video. But Godzilla, this is about, and there's a lot of them out there, but they all sell. And it's not easy to find cheap. So this is like $316, $317 on average. But I've seen this thing sell for as high as uh, like 600, 600 bucks. So it's not cheap. And that's the other thing I want to throw out with these. These are big toys. Again, two feet tall in most cases. Plastic, just not easy to find. And they're not cheap. Not easy to ship either. But so number four, Godzilla. 
awesome. One of my favorites. I wish he was higher in the list, but I'm going off of the average sale prices. That's that's how I'm breaking this down. That's why uh, I have what it is. And this is the most recent data that I could find. The most recent data that I have is what I'm basing this on. So this is as of this week, this first week of December. That's where the prices are. So that's where this list is based on. This is not a preference list, not an investment speculation list. I'm just telling you what these things are selling for because you might find it interesting because I find it interesting. Uh, but number three, this is the most robot looking one of the run. Like, I mean, these are cool giant robots, but a lot of them, they look kind of like samurais. They've look monsters in some cases, but this dude, Dimos, Deimos, don't know what I'm saying, right? He looks straight up Danger Will Robinson robot. And uh, he's also not easy to find as most of them aren't. And uh, he's averaging about like 390, 389, I think, uh, sale prices for him. And again, that same $600 kind of high sale prices uh, for this one. And again, you can see there's a lot of pieces that go to these things. And uh, if you can find them in the box, that's you know fantastic. Obviously, it's, it's basically just like a big, uh, I don't even want to say shoe box. It's almost like a model box from back in the day. Just like the box that just kind of closes in. That's all you know that covers these uh, these figures inside. And just a little bit of cardboard to keep things from rattling around. But uh, yeah, so boxed, unboxed, buy them if you can. They're cool. Uh, moving us on. And again, as I said, I might be saying these names wrong, but apart from that, these are Japanese toys. So a lot of cases, these have different names. Now with the translations, they might be different. So you might find different versions of some of these characters where the name doesn't completely line up to what you might be looking for, but they're uh, slight variations. I know they made different versions in different countries and, and what have you in different runs, but ultimately I'm just gonna throw out the ones that I know and, and know them by and was able to find you know, resource wise. And a good resource for uh, just to throw this out there now uh, for Shogun Warriors, I found, I think it was shogunwarriors.org, had a lot of great information, a lot of great pictures. Uh, I, I use it just for reference to find a lot of these things to make sure I was getting like names and things right and uh, putting the line together. So if you're more interested, check it out. Uh, I mean, I'm sure the, they, they appreciate the traffic because I don't know how many people are interested in Shogun Warriors these days, but I am, I was, so hopefully if you're watching this video, you are too. So show them some love and go swing by their site. But let's take us on to number two. So number two, uh, we got Gold Rake. Uh, I know it's kind of a weird name, but this is, we're talking about an average sale price and the sales for these, cause maybe they're, I think they're a little harder to find. So there's not as much volume as there are like Godzilla. As I said, there, there were dozens of sales of Godzilla over the last couple of months that I can find on eBay and I could, uh, you know, give a good solid uh, sales estimate because there's a lot of information. Not to say that the uh, sales information here is weaker. It's just there aren't as many sales for Gold Rig as there are, you know, for the Godzilla. But he's still averaging close to that $600. Uh, I think it was 588 Yeah, 588 is what I got uh, when I averaged out all the sale prices on this, uh, this one. And high sale of a little over a grand. Uh, so this is say. You know, same chump change. This, this is some money we're talking about here for some of these figures. And cool figure. He looks a lot like uh, the first on the list, Mazinga. But uh, you can tell the little bit of the difference here with the uh, the yellow uh, coming out the sides. And I can't believe how much these sell for these days because I had these all when I was a kid. And I'm pretty sure my dad and I, we just got rid of them at the flea market for nothing uh, to clear out the you know attic and garage space. But what are you going to do? I'm not the only one, kid who got rid of all his old toys uh, prematurely. I guess I should have had more uh, more nostalgia, uh, more uh, sentimentality. But, hey, it is what it is. I still appreciate them and can look back on them fondly now. And uh, if I can find them again, get them again. If not, memories are always there. But not to uh, get too far afield here, our number one. Going to our number one pick, going back to Godzilla, Rodan. This thing, I had this this was awesome. This, I, I love using this thing. It's just like some huge monster to fight my GI Joes. It, it was just, the scale of it was pretty cool. The wings, it was, it was like out to here, you know, like it, it was a bad, badass figure. I, I gotta say it, the rubber bands, I will say the rubber bands did not last forever as rubber bands tend to break. And we're not talking about the little, you know, the the little black ones in the GI Joes with the waist. These were like straight up just regular old rubber bands, like packaging rubber bands basically that had the wings work, you know, you would have to kind of clench your fist and it would make the, you know, the wings flap and all that. Those, those rubber bands didn't last for forever. So it was, a uh, it was tough trying to find replacements and try to figure out how to weave them in and out to get the, get your toy to work again. But this figure, again, this, this one hits our number one, cause it's by far and away, uh, most expensive, I guess. Uh, so 
averaging about 931 bucks uh, for this box unbox. We're talking complete, incomplete, uh, all of them sell, but high sales, and I think it's a high sales with a box one, is close to 2200 bucks. So $2,200 for a uh, Rodan uh, figure. I don't even want to say figure because, again, these things are big. These are two feet. These aren't little toys. These are big toys. Uh, so I don't know how the hell I had all of them, where I stored them all. But I guess, yeah, I was an only child until I was 10. So I had a lot of extra space in the house. So I was spoiled. But there's our top list, top five list. That was our number one, Rodan. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, come back next week. Maybe I move it up to 10. And, um, you know, thanks for stopping by. Check out all the other cool stuff we got here on Tales from the Flip Side. But uh, I'll be back next week. I'm not sure what toy line I'm going to cover next, but I got a lot of great suggestions. Some modern, but when I really get into the older stuff, that's when uh, it, it starts hitting me in the feels. So I, I want to talk about visionaries. I want to talk about muscles. I want to hit the wheel warriors and the old school Joes and transform. There's so many cool toy lines that we can get to that I can't wait to do more of these. But again, thanks for stopping by. And uh, if you're watching this on my channel, just hang on for a couple of moments because we're going to get to the honorable mentions and see the rest of this run along with a couple of little extras. So uh, I'll see you guys later on the flip side.